Alright, hello guys. In this video, I'm going to be presenting you my monthly analog breakdown. So I'm going to be showing you December temperatures, January temperatures, and February temperatures. So stay tuned for that. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content. I make all sorts of videos like this. And also check the links down in the description and the pinned comment for my social medias. Now, we're going to get right into things looking at our December analogs. And keep in mind, this is only analog. So this is based on sea surface temperatures, years that looked very similar to this and what ended up happening for them. So the years are 1958 to 1959, 1962 to 1963, 2004 to 2005, 2009 to 2010, and 2014 to 2015. Those are my, all my analog years so far. This is subject to change. This could change over the coming months and I probably will update this video once or twice as we head into winter. So keep that in mind. Stay tuned for those updates, but it should only be tweaks. It shouldn't change too much from this. So in December, you could see that we had pretty warm temperatures there for the west, up against the west coast, as well as out to Nevada, Utah, Arizona, Idaho. And you can see we're in that second shade of red, meaning it's pretty warm out there in December. And this warm extends all the way out into Kansas and Nebraska. It points out kind of. So all of the Rockies are in this. And then you can see there's a cold area for the entire east, eastern United States from Texas up into the Dakotas eastward. And we get into that medium shade as well for a lot of those regions up against the northeast coast and then down into some of the western Gulf states and then up into the north covering the entire Great Lakes region and New England region. And we even get into that third shade of blue, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, upstate New York, northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and northern Maine. All of you are in that third shade of blue, meaning very, very cold and pretty persistent cold as well. So this is looking like a pretty cold month for a lot of those northern areas. Not going to be too warm at all, like I'm saying. And this looks to be one of the colder months, actually, comparatively to normal, as I was looking at my analogs. Very, very cold compared to normal. And it looks also like the warmest month for the West. So you guys on the West, there is some hope this isn't the, this isn't like how all the months will be. This looks to be the warmest one out of the three that I'm showing in this video. Now, moving on to January, this looks to be the most kind of uh, averaged out month, I guess you could say. Really just the first shade of orange and the first shade of blue there. So this looks to be one of the colder months for the west and the warmer months for the east. As again, we don't even get into that second shade on either side. You can see the warm has moved a little bit further west as Kansas and Nebraska are now in the average temperatures as well as some of those uh, Rocky Mountains, Northern Rockies. And then some of the four corner states as well. Texas, your average, below average near the coast as well. But Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, eastward, you're below average or slightly below average. As well as Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, eastward. Again, slightly below average. This won't mean that we won't have a lot of snowstorms. This is just going to be the most averaged out month out of the three. And it's not looking insanely cold or anything. So it, it shouldn't be too bad in the month of January and also in the West, this could be your time frame where you could see some cold and snow at certain points just because this won't be as persistent seeing as we're in the first shade of orange there. You could see some colder times in January for you guys out there in the West, which is pretty good news for you guys. I know you guys are probably very tired of seeing well above average temperatures all the time. Last winter was pretty cold for you guys. So that was a good relief from the normal pattern that we've been having over the last 10 years. But yeah, things are looking a little bit warmer this winter. Now, here's the February outlook, and you can see the west doesn't really change, just slightly above average, meaning that we could see some colder time frames again. Uh, not saying that it's going to be well below average for you guys or anything, but there, again, could be some colder time frames within the month of February out there west in California, Nevada, Four Corner States, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, you guys. Montana into the Dakotas eastward, we're slightly below average temperatures downward into Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. All of us are slightly below average temperatures. And then you can see that medium shade of blue there that extends from Wisconsin down south into Missouri, down south into Texas, and eastward, except with the exception of Maine. You guys stay in the first shade of blue there. But besides that, we are in the medium shade of blue, meaning pretty persistent cold. There should be a few warm-ups at times, obviously, as that's usually how a 30-day period would go. You're not going to be cold the entire time, but when it is cold, it will be very cold. 
and also most of the time it should be cold. That's what I'm calling for right now. And then we have that third shade of blue. We have an area in Texas in that third shade of blue and then an area for Arkansas up into the northern portions of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, upward into Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, D.C., Maryland, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina. All of those areas should be in the third shade of blue. And again, this is well below average temperatures. And also, it'll be very consistent cold for you guys. It, more than half the time, it will be cold during this month, according to my analogs. And the important thing to keep in mind with this video is that this is only according to the analogs, like I said in the beginning of the video. Now, the models could show something different as we get closer, and that would completely change this. Not completely, but it would influence this in a different direction. Uh, but really, I think that this is a pretty good look, and I think that a lot of the models will come pretty close to showing something similar to this. As long as they're showing slightly below average temperatures for the east, I'm probably going to stick with this look for the most part. And you, you might notice that this looks a lot different than my actual forecast, and that's because my actual forecast took into account things like models and things like trends that we've been having. This is purely based on my an analogs. And I just wanted to present this to you guys. This is basically a winter thoughts video, but I wanted to title it something that is a little more uh, resemblance, resemblant of what the video actually is. And now here's the D, G, J, F anomalies. And this is December, January, February all together. So the entire winter. And you can see that out west for Arizona, Utah, Idaho, westward, we have slightly above average temperatures. With that medium shade of orange up against the coast, again, that'll be a little bit more persistent with the warm throughout the entire three-month period. And then for Montana into the, the Dakota, south into Kansas, Texas, eastward, we have slightly below average temperatures. And then you can see that medium shade of blue that extends from Wisconsin down into Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, eastward, with the exception of Maine once again. We do have moderately below average temperatures there for that area. And again, it will be pretty consistent. We will have warm-ups, especially in January, but the other months you can't rule it out either. And then we also see that third shade of blue there for Texas and then upward into Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, northern Kentucky, areas in West Virginia, northern Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, D.C., Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, including New York City, and then western portions of Massachusetts and Connecticut. We're all in that third shade of blue. Those are going to be the two coldest regions for this winter, according to my analogs, and they show pretty consistent cold over the entire three month period, which is really crazy. So this is looking like a winter that could have some pretty consistent cold for those areas, like I said before. Anyway, again, this is subject to change. So keep looking out for the updates. It should change in very slight ways and should still resemble this first one. A lot of people get confused when I'm like, this should change. They're like, oh, so it's gonna be completely different in three months. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying that there will be some differences and some things will stay the same. So this does have some importance and it should resemble the final outlook for the winter in a lot of ways. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I wanted to mention something about the scheduling for the winter forecast. I'm expecting to make my next winter forecast my part two in probably about, well, let's say by the 15th. I think about August 15th, I'm going to be updating that forecast. I do see some some tweaks that I can make to some some of the temperature, precipitation, and overall forecast that I wanted to go ahead and do. And you guys have been asking when the next update will be for the winter forecast, so I uh, I'm assuming that if I just go ahead and update it with the few tweaks that I have, obviously I wouldn't change it if there was nothing that I need to change, but there is some things that I feel like I was going to change eventually, so I might as well do it now as there will be more changes down the road as well. Uh, and again, I'm expecting about two or three updates after the first one to that anyway, so there will be more winter forecasts coming out as I find you know things to tweak. Let me know in the comments what you think of me just changing the forecast once I see some tweaks I need to make. Uh, does that bother any of you that I that I do that? I think that it's a good thing. Most people have complimented that, that I'm willing to go ahead and change and update the forecast. I, I don't hold on to that first forecast too much. If I see that I need to change it, you know, I, I bite the bullet and go ahead and do it uh, and basically abandon my first forecast because it's more important to stay accurate than to stick with your early call, in my opinion. Uh, so that's kind of the scheduling for the winter forecast. Probably by the end of August, I'll also make an updated one, and then sometime in September, and then sometime in October, and then most likely also sometime in November. So there will be many updates to the winter forecast. Obviously, if, like, let's say in September I don't see anything I need to change, there won't be one in September. I'll wait till October, something like that. 
So that's kind of how I'm going about this whole win the winter forecast and the seasonal forecasting. As of right now, obviously in a year or two, I might change that. And I do plan on making YouTube videos for that long, by the way. Uh, anyway, guys, I hope you really, really, really enjoyed this this kind of winter breakdown month by month. Let me know what you thought of this video as I could make more videos like this in the future. Anyway, guys, thanks for sticking uh, to this video if you're still hearing this by the end of it as I've been rambling on for probably about three minutes now. Uh, anyway, I, again, I really just hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below what you thought and make sure to like the video. See you guys in the next one. Have a great day.